Throughout most of this class, we've looked at um, technology as being guided by this three-tier system, the presentation tier, the processing tier, and the data tier. The presentation tier being closest to the user, providing the user experience, the processing tier having the core functionality of the application or the system, and the data tier being the long-term storage of the information of the system. There's another kind of older way of looking at computer systems that we're going to use in this lecture, and that's the idea of input, processing, and output. And really, the only difference between these two systems is not that they cover different amounts of system, it's just that they organize it a little bit differently. So in the input processing and output system, you can see that we take the processing and the data tier and we put them together and we just say that's processing. So you can see in this diagram that input processing and output is pretty natural because we have um, different hardware for the different parts of it. So you can use that same idea of input processing and output to talk about how people work. Now, the, the, the analogy isn't perfect, but it's, it's pretty good, and it'll give us a, a really good framework for looking at um, all of these VR and, cyber, and uh, cyber being systems. So people have input, people have processing, and people have output as well. Input at the very largest, um, at the very largest uh, level is your senses. Output is your behavior, right? So you take things in through your eyes and your ears, et cetera, et cetera. And what happens? It, it gets all processed by your brain, and then in some place or another, you behave. You do things, right? And that's the, that's the output. That's you working back on the world. The world working on you is your senses or your input. Then you make sense of that. You do things inside your head with it, inside your brain, and then you behave according to it in some way or another. So that's an input processing and output way to look at people. So now let's dive into each of the three categories. Input. So there's the, you know, the, the natural way to think of this is the five senses, right? Um, but I want to take it. I want to. I want to take it down a notch and talk a little bit more specifically about some of these things. So first of all, I want to say that you can see things, right? Just in general, you can see objects. You can judge distances to those objects. You know, you can judge the solidity of the object. All that kind of stuff about seeing objects. But then specifically, you can see language, right? You can see written language, and that's input as well. That we're we get lots and lots of input that way, right? Every time you read, you're seeing language. Okay, then you can hear normal sounds and you can also hear language. You can hear speech, like you're hearing my speech right now. You can touch, right, using your fingers, but uh, touch isn't only your fingers. Touch happens actually all over your skin. There's also the sense of balance. What do I have to do to, in, in order that I won't fall over? There's body sense. So how do I know, for example, that my arm is raised? If you closed, you know, if you blindfolded me and, and raised my arm for me and then maybe spun me around to get me off balance, I'd still know my arm was in the air. In addition to body sense is smell, right? We can, we can chemically sense things around us. And then finally, internal sense organs. We can sense the state of those things. So for example, we know what our heart, heartbeat is. It's not a conscious thing we know, but we do know it and we do make decisions based on that. But there's also a kind of an internal organ sense that I'm gonna focus on here. And the best way to, the best way to illustrate it is what happens when you suddenly fall? You get that feeling, right, right in here. And that feeling is a, is a feeling in your internal organs that says something's happened. I'm not really going to go into, de into detail about processing. We can talk forever about the kind of processing that your brain does. But for us right now, let's just imagine that your brain does a whole lot of processing. So what comes out? Well, if we can hear language, we can also speak language. Um, we can make other sounds. We can make grunts and moans and groans, and those things have an efficacy. They have a, an impact on our environment. We can write language, right? That's, a, that's literally a gestural movement with my, with my fingers, but it's a very important one because that's a way of affecting the environment. Um, there's facial expression, right? Smile, frown, right? Grimace, all those facial expressions. Okay, uh, in addition to facial language, body expression, right? I use body expression all the time in my classes. This body expression, Right, versus this one. So movement and, loc and locomotion. Locomotion means movement, basically, or movement from one place to another, but this is movement, but it's not really locomotion, right? When I walk down the street, that's locomotion. So locomotion and movement is another behavior that we exhibit, another thing that we do. Um, hand gestures. We use hand gestures all the time. We also have chemicals. We also exude chemicals in addition to sensing chemicals when, and they have efficacy, they have impact on the world. Um, and then finally, um, dress and accoutrement. Accoutrement means, you know, maybe I have a sword strapped to my, to my belt. Those also have an impact on the world. Imagine, all right, so we can look at human beings as doing this input processing and output as well. And I hope to use these same ideas over and over again of, of what kinds of things are the important inputs, what kind of things are the important outputs. And then we'll talk a little bit at the end about, um, about processing.